Good morning, good night. This is not an episode you want to miss because we find out the issue. What the heck went wrong with my knock sensors? And it's pretty obvious once we get down into it. Stick around. So we had to stop last time because we didn't have this. Torx style socket. Look, if you're gonna get it, you may as well spend the money to get the best thing. This is Pittsburgh from Harbor Freight. Made famous by uh, failing jack stands, yeah. Pittsburgh famous tools. As soon as I get my head in here, I realize there's a problem straight away. I've got coolant leaking. So let's get this figured out. Give you what I'm seeing here. Got a little bit of a leak there. Well, I plugged that with basically the only thing I had, which is a, a socket extension. Okay, I've used the same trick on this one. Just a socket extension uh, to put in there. <laughs> You might have a bolt or something better to use than that, but this is where we're at right now. Okay, we're gonna be working on the fuel rail here. Like a little plastic protection on here. You don't, you don't want this coming off by accident. Okay, that, that slid right off. So that was put in from the driver's side towards the passenger side. For the fuel system, to disconnect the fuel rail, you'll see that green button that you press on the top and the bottom at the same time. You squeeze and pull it towards the rear of the vehicle. All right, it's off. A little bit of fuel came out, just like uh, an ounce or two, and now it's stopped. Just gonna move this out of my way and, and disconnect it. It's pretty obvious where it goes, so just take that back, which is a little clip, and then just gently wiggle it. Very nice, easy enough. We may as well tape it up while we're at it. All right, we're gonna do we're gonna take, disconnect these fuel injectors. All right, and this should be as simple as just grabbing it and releasing it. There you go, very easy. You press on the clip, pull it off. Now we're gonna mark these while we're at it, even though I think it's pretty obvious where they go. Left, and then middle and right. And there it goes. It's going. Okay. I, so do, to be clear, I did not have to take that harness off. What I think I'm going to do is to try and take off this intake manifold as a whole piece. So these fuel rails will come with the intake manifold. And I think that's going to work. We have a 12 millimeter socket here and here. Here and here. So that's four. Probably gonna have to take off this, which that also is a 12, conveniently. I'm not gonna take off these fuel rails if I don't have to. I think they can stay on, and the injectors will come right out with the intake manifold. So the less we can touch, the better. And then there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six of the Torx bolts. So let's work from our outside in, and we'll go from there. And none of the torque is not high on any of these, so you should not be struggling to break them loose. We'll try that trick that we heard from some other people. Put a little bit of a paper towel in here just to help it bite. See if that works. If it's gonna fall, I, I should be able to retrieve it even if it does fall. Yeah, look at that. That worked. All right, very cool. Thank you guys for that tip. Part of the reason you cover this up is so if you drop something dumb like a nut or a bolt, you do not want it going into the engine. Oh no, no you do not. Bag them and tag them, boys. All right, guys, always excited to get a new tool. And we have one here. This happens to be a T40 Torx bit on a, on a socket. So let's go for it. And you'll notice that fits right there. And again, not a ton of torque on these, but just bring it out nicely. 
nice and easy. I don't drop it. There it goes. Lovely. I don't know. A little bit of rust on that. <laughs> and before we go any farther, I'm just going to take my Dyson and get in here. Because I see just enough dirt to bother me. You know, is it, it is a 10 year old car. Just want to work clean, that's all. Yeah, I'm like leaning on the fender. I've got this, uh, I've got this pretty soft blanket just to kind of keep anything from scratching. And I've got my belt off to the side. But I am literally leaning, like my belly is on the fender here. There it goes. So once we take this out, unless I'm forgetting something, this intake manifold should be loose. Should be as loose as Lizzo. I'll point out that these bolts, uh, this one over here, this came from the bottom of the intake manifold and this is coming from the top up in the corner over there. They are ever so slightly different, so I'm gonna be careful as I store these. So that came right out. Take this off first. <laughs> that that bracket that we worked on. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're out. And the question is, are we completely out? I think we're free, buddy. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Yes, yes. Intake manifold is out. Okay. Uh, quick note: if you're uh, trying to clean up a little bit of fuel spill, it's recommended to blot rather than wipe. Blotting it can just help absorb it, get it off of any painted surfaces, which is what you're mostly concerned about, um, you know, because it can eat into the paint. Antique manifold out, replacing it face down um, so we don't damage the fuel injectors, which are sticking out the bottom here. Something a little weird here. This gasket did not come off cleanly. I'm probably going to have to clean that up. I have a replacement gasket, uh, which is not the problem. They're cheap and easy to get but I don't like that it's kind of stuck here. Let me see. Now remember, you don't want to scratch the surface of this, right? And this is what it looks like in here. So you can see this is the gas, you know, one of the gaskets. And it's kind of, I don't know, it doesn't look all that great if I'm honest with you. And obviously you can see some, you know, gasket residue there. So we got the intake manifold out. I'm super pumped about that. And guess what I can see? Two knock sensors. Hold up. So I'm in here poking around and I see, of course we have one knock sensor. And by the way, they both look gorgeous, the sensors themselves, but look at what I see. Oh my God. Are you guys seeing this? Right here. That is a, a nibbled on wire. Someone was in here nibbling on my wires. Probably means knock sensor itself is fine so now i got to figure out how to either get a new harness or just kind of repair that it's so close to the clip though by the way i think that p0328 code is specifically for this knock sensor so i'm going to double check that if everything lines up i'll be pretty confident that it is indeed this problem <laughs> i'm still laughing about this guys oh my god I have to get myself some new clips. I don't have much to work with. You know, this wire loom is pretty much right on the car. You know, so I'll have to unmount that. I just, I'm working in the most ridiculous way ever. I'm like literally leaning on the car to get my head down in here. And like I'm laying on it on the car like it's a surfboard. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm super pumped to find out what it is. Like this is exciting. Um, so I'm gonna rethink things a little bit and figure out how to get this back together so all right guys 
stay tuned for part three at this point now for when we get this actually fixed and put back together. Uh, and then, you know, I have so many other fun things I want to do, which is, you know, get some roller shots of this car, have another track day, uh, and really just enjoy the car. So stick around for that. All right, guys. Are you still recording? <laughs> There's always somebody with a chainsaw that needs to do it like right now. <laughs> oh, Ryan's making a video. Let's let's cut something down. <laughs>